and up and up and up. In truth, we are a long way from the finish line of fully autonomous cars. So tomorrow, when you look across the displays at CES, and you see what is currently being tested and developed, what you will actually find is that these systems can only handle certain speed ranges, certain weather conditions, certain street complexity, or certain traffic. So despite the tremendously wonderful progress that you'll see, most of what has been collectively accomplished by all of us working in this field has actually been relatively easy. And the reason that it's easy is that most driving is easy. So where we need help in autonomy, where we really need autonomy to help us the most, is actually not when driving is easy. We know how to drive when driving is easy. We can do it when we're not half paying attention and we wonder how it was that we finally got home while we were thinking of something else. We need to not only solve driving when it's easy, we need to solve driving when it's hard, when it's difficult. And it's that hard part the TRI intends to address. So up until now, to further explain this, our industry has measured on-road reliability of autonomous vehicles in the millions of miles. Very impressive. But to achieve full mobility, we actually need reliability that is a million times better than what's been achieved. We need trillion mile reliability. Where does the trillion come from? Every year, Toyota sells around 10 million vehicles around the world. This is order of magnitude. Each of those vehicles travels around 10,000 miles per year, lasts approximately 10 years. Multiply all those numbers out, we find that there are roughly 100 million Toyota cars and trucks in service at any given time around the world. How many miles do those travel? Multiply it out again, we find that they travel a total of on the order of 1 trillion miles per year. A trillion is a lot of miles. And even if a very small percentage of the trillion miles is difficult, that small percentage times a trillion equals many, many miles of very difficult driving. That's what we need to address. So when you see demonstrations, when you hear declarations of full autonomy, remember that most of it is easy and a little bit is very hard. And most of what you're seeing is the easy part. Now, society tolerates a lot of human error. You heard about all of the deaths that happen in the U.S. every year. Around the world, it's around 1.2 million per year from automobile accidents. Our standards for human performance and human reliability are very different than for automobiles and for any kind of machine. We expect machines to do much better. We expect them to be ever ready and nearly perfect. So the technologies that we develop have to work not only at the million mile scale, but I hope I've convinced you also at the trillion mile scale. A trillion miles is a lot of miles. So how are we gonna address this problem? We are going to have four initial mandates. Number one, we want to enhance the safety of automobiles, again with the ultimate goal, as Bob said, of creating a car that is incapable of causing a crash. This is going to be true in our goal, regardless of the skill or the condition of the driver. Number two, we want to increase access to cars to those who cannot otherwise drive. This includes people with special needs and seniors. That's the area where we need full autonomy as opposed to driver assist and stopping accidents from happening. Number three, we are going to translate Toyota's incredible expertise in creating products for outdoor mobility, like cars and trucks, into products for indoor mobility. In other words, Toyota's goal is to move people across the room, across town, and across the country. Finally, we hope to accelerate scientific discovery by applying the techniques from artificial intelligence and machine learning to other areas of scientific discovery, particularly material science. We're moving quickly to establish a new company. As Bob mentioned, we're opening business this month in two locations. One, in Stanford Research Park in Palo Alto, California. 
the second in Kendall Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Those facilities were purposefully picked to be short 10-minute bike rides or walks to Stanford and MIT, respectively. We expect many researchers with ties to both institutions to work also at TRI. We plan to invest actually in the future in other universities around the world, including in Japan. We started initially just at Stanford and MIT over just the past few months, 30 research projects, 3-0. And it's just really incredible. Stanford and MIT are going to make these lists public of exactly what they're doing. Uh, and you'll see them from those two institutions. But today I'm going to give you a little preview, a little hint, uh, and describe them to you now. First, a team at Stanford is going to work on a project whose name you may laugh at called Uncertainty on Uncertainty. So only a genius professor can think of this. So what do we really mean by this? Well, it's one thing to teach an autonomous car to respond safely to events that we expect to occur, undesirable events. So what does the car do, for instance, if a cyclist suddenly veers into the road? Well, we can program that, we can figure out how to do it, we can test it, do all that work. But the really challenging thing is how do we teach the car to respond safely to events that we do not expect, that we don't anticipate beforehand? It's hard even to think about because, by definition, we haven't anticipated it. So I'm going to do a little thought experiment with you now. Let's pretend for a moment that we did not anticipate the following example. Let's say that we didn't think of the need for a car to avoid debris that falls off of a truck in the front of the car. How should the car respond? Well, should it think about the debris uh, in terms of another car? Cars know how to avoid other cars, that's our basic program. Well, kind of. But debris is not like other cars. It might break apart into smaller debris and suddenly become lots more cars. And so the behavior to deal with cars and the behavior to deal with this unknown challenge of debris are going to be different. Should it think of the debris like a pedestrian? Pedestrians cross streets. Well, kind of. But not quite, because the debris that falls off a truck might initially be moving very quickly at high speed, and thus predicting where a person will move at slow speed will be different than predicting where the debris will go at high speed. Really hard problems. So to address this challenge, the Stanford team will be augmenting machine learning techniques with new methods that give generalized competence to handle the unanticipated. I'm going to spare you the math and their research proposal. Uh, but what they're going to fundamentally be doing is measuring the robustness of automotive and automated vehicle systems, not only for risks that are known, but for risks that they haven't seen before. Again, the hypothetical that I gave you, because I told it to you, is for a known. We need to make these systems work for things we haven't thought of before. So I hope you can uh, appreciate the very importance of this kind of project. Let me go deeply now into a second example. Again, this is the second of 30 total that we've funded so far. A team at MIT is going to lead a project called the Car 